Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and using one of the new stamp sets as well as some of the new liquid watercolors that I just showed in a recent haul video. Um, this week's color throwdown challenge was perfect for this set. So I pulled out three different colors of this Pink Fresh Studios liquid watercolor. I have sky blue, sapphire, and licorice. And I am just dropping them directly onto my glass media mat. And I have two pieces of Distress watercolor paper, um, the pre-cut four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have just a smooth, like, flat side facing up. And to create my backgrounds, I'm just wetting the paper first, rather messily, with clean water. And then I'm just going to start like dropping in the liquid watercolor. And this is kind of an experiment on my part just to create a um, background to see how these colors kind of move. Um, nothing super particular. I want it to be, you know, messy, let the colors sort of run um, because I want them to look kind of give the impression of water anyway. So I'm picking up with a smaller brush because I wanted a little bit more kind of control. And doing this, I also I discovered that the sapphire, like the dark blue color, it really wants to move, which is really fun. So knowing that, like when you experiment with your watercolors, when you um, play around with them and whatnot and know like what colors really want to move or what colors want to stay in place and just all those different things, it can help you when you're doing, you know, paintings and backgrounds and whatnot. So I just kind of had fun with it, added a little bit of splatter, and then I set it aside to dry. And then for my second panel, I, did, I started the same way, just, you know, wet the area. And this time I dropped the light color, this sky blue, directly from the dropper onto it. And I really liked how that went. So this one is the lighter colors, which is true with a lot of watercolors I work with. Um, lighter colors a lot of times don't move as much, you know? Whereas that really, that d this deep sapphire color just really wants to spread everywhere. So it was just fun to kind of experiment. And the great thing with this is you'll never get the same result every time you do this. Like both of these panels, they're completely different. So, and I did two because I wanted to experiment with them. Plus I wanted to make at least, you know, more than one card in one sitting. So I added the colors, I added some more splatter, um, added some kind of intentional little blobs here and there while I was at it just to get everything very, you know, loose and then set those aside to completely dry. And then I pulled out another piece of the Distress watercolor paper, which again is um, the smooth side facing up. And this time I put it into my stamp platform so that I can stamp um, the two whale images from this Picket Fence Studios A Dose of Vitamin C stamp set. So I grabbed both those images, lined them up here, and I am going to stamp them with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And I used my anti-static powder tool first so that I can clear heat embossies after I've stamped them. So I stamped them a couple times with that black ink. And because VersaFine takes a little while to dry, it gives me enough time to coat these with some detail clear embossing powder. And then just um, melt that with my heat tool. So I just melt that until it is smooth and glossy and melted. And I just like doing that because it makes me, it gives me a little bit of leeway when I'm watercoloring. I don't really have to worry about things like running outside the lines as much and I can just paint and go. So I'm just using what's left over on my glass mat here to paint these. So I just started with like the main area, wet it with clean water and then just picked up that lighter color and then added a bit of the licorice and then kind of just mix them together. So I got more of a little bit of a blue gray sort of a color. And I did that to both of them. And then I just picked up that licorice and just very lightly painted that along the bottom parts of both these whales. Really simple, really easy. Once that was done, I let it dry and then I just quickly fussy cut these out with my scissors because I don't, there's no coordinating dies for these. So I just um, painted over everything, like I said, let it dry, trim them out, and then my background panels by this point were completely dry, so I die cut those with the largest of the MFT A2 stitched rectangle stacks, set two. <laughs> so I die cut those, they're just the nice little stitch edge. And then I ha absolutely had to um, use, I love this little like burst image, you know, the like the exhaust, I guess you'd call it from the whales. I love this stamp, I just, I love the style of it. You could heat emboss this with white, it would show up a little bit more, but when I was going through my embossing powders, I have this Wendy Vecchi Forget Me Not Blue embossing powder that I just love. 
So I stamped the image with um, Ink on 3's Juicy Embossing Ink, and then I used that blue embossing powder, and it's just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> so like I said, though, you could use white, and it would stand out more on that, like, blue watery background. But I really wanted to use the blue because it's just pretty. And when the light catches it, you know, and it's all shiny, it looks really nice. So I did that with both um, background panels. I heat embossed that image with that blue embossing powder. And then I lined up the panels again and I'm stamping the large sentiment from the set, this time with that same VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And using the stamp platform again to make sure that I can double stamp these sentiments so they really, they're stamped cleanly and they're nice and crisp and really obvious. And for the second one, I actually just used the stamp packaging, the, you know, backing sheet to cover up my background so that I can move that sentiment stamp around without having to clean my stamp and not worry about getting, you know, ink smears on my background. So then I lined up the sentiment again and stamped it, like I said, twice to get a really good, crisp, clean sentiment there. And then for my um, card bases, I have a piece of Simon Says Stamps Sea Glass cardstock that I cut in half lengthwise. And then I'm scoring both of these at the five and a half inch mark. So these will be top folding A2 size cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So I scored those with my little score buddy and my Teflon bone folder. And then I popped my watercolor backgrounds with um, some foam tape onto both of my card bases. And then I used um, the Simon Says Stamp, the Big Mama foam tape that is thinner. And I used that on the back of both of these whales. So it popped them up a little bit, but it's not super, super thick like it is with regular foam tape. So I just coated the back of each of those whales with the thinner foam tape. And then I popped those into place right below the little heat embossed burst of water there. And once I had those in place, I want to stamp the insides of my cards. So I pulled out another sentiment from the um, A Dose of Vitamin C stamp set. And this one says, you matter to me more than all the fish in the sea. And I stamped that on the inside of both those cards with that uh, VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I pulled my card base out of my the platform there. And I'm just using acrylic blocks for this because there's a whole bunch of little images in the set. So I just stuck those onto acrylic blocks and started stamping them onto the inside of the card with different Distress Oxide inks. So I used Blueprint Sketch for the little fish. I used Hickory Smoke. There's this fun little um, manta ray and a giant squid image. And then I used Broken China for the little jellyfish images in the set. Like, just, just fun. So I stamped those on the insides of both cards. And then as a finishing touch to um, my scene on the front of my cards, I pulled out a bunch of Studio Cadia drops. I have some um, extra large round drops, the Simon Says Stamp exclusive mix of drops, and I also have the iridescent bubbles. So I kind of sprinkled those throughout my card front here, and they're just so much fun and perfect for anything like water themed. So once I was kind of happy with where I had those placed, I adhered them into place with some multimedia matte adhesive and my little jewel picker. So picking it up with my jewel picker, putting down a little dab of adhesive and pressing those little like drops and bubbles into place. And then once those are all in place, they just need, you know, a few minutes to dry and that's going to finish off my cards. So as always, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post with links to all the supplies used and a link to the color throwdown challenge. So you can check that out below if you're interested. And thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.